This episode of Small Town Western New York was made possible by the following supporters. Hi, on this episode of Small Town Western New York, I'm taking a day trip to a place that most Western New Yorkers really only know is a village that was featured in a recent major Hollywood movie. And while the film did do a lot to garner good press, not only for the village we're gonna see, but also Western New York, I still thought there was a lot left on the proverbial table. More than any other place that I've featured on this series, whether it's a town or hamlet or a village, when this place is referred to, it's referred to as Small Town USA, Main Street USA, or as cliche as it sounds, even Mayberry. And after spending a few days there preparing for this episode, I'd have to say that I'd agree with any of those assessments. I'm headed to the village of Akron. Akron's name is taken from a Greek word signifying a high summit. It was first settled in 1829, becoming incorporated 20 years later in 1849, with the village ingesting the community of Falkirk in the process. During its early years, and due to the prevalence of deposits of gypsum, the village was once an important cement producing center, as well as a producer of cigars. Nowadays, there are primarily two things that Akron is most notable for in the region. One is the rich twin octagon house, and the other is Akron Falls County Park, with its beautiful falls that make an easy and rewarding hike for anyone. The park actually features two waterfalls, one reaching 90 feet. There are several trails and paths for hikers of all ages, as well as a small lake and a site where a historic mill once stood. Something I think that's incredibly special about Akron, among so many other things, is the fact that this beautiful park actually runs right into the village itself, giving direct foot and bike access to anyone who lives in or near the village. There's a lot in this park for everyone to enjoy, and it's something that really separates Akron from almost any other town in western New York. There's some areas here that rival some of the best parks I've been to in some of the best cities in the country as well as Europe, and it's definitely worth a visit, or two, or three. The other park in the village is one of the best examples of a town park, town square done right I've seen so far in western New York. It offers everything you'd want in a town square community park, with a gazebo, a bandstand, a great setting of congregational areas, and now even a brand new splash pad for the kids. You really have the entire village nestled all around you here, and I absolutely love it. I arranged a meeting for this episode with Don Holmes, Akron's resident historian at his office in the town's relatively new library complex. And we spent a good hour or so there as he showed me his great collection of old photos of the town, as well as sharing quite a few anecdotes and a few of his well-researched presentations he likes to give. It was such a nice day out that Don suggested we take advantage of it and head up the block to Russell Park to talk about the town's history in a much more visually appealing place. I love the fact that you have this beautiful village mm -hmm. tucked into this town yeah. and it, the way this park is I mean this park is spectacular I could probably do three episodes just on this park alone yeah. I mean I've this is a nice park it's beautiful and it's probably the largest town square I think I've seen I'm, I'm really trying to recall if I've seen another one this yeah. size is there a story behind this park well this this land was donated by Jonathan Russell okay um, as were many things in the town um, to, uh, the, this land was donated by him. The cemetery up here in the corner was donated by him. Okay. I think he built the first school in the village, which was where this building up in the corner is, was the old town hall. Okay. What well, was the town hall when I came here? Um, so Jonathan Russell did a lot for the community. He he bought a lot of land and he donated a fair amount of it mm -hmm. for public purposes. The park has existed in many different states since he donated it. I mean, there was a time that it was probably largely occupied by um, tree trunks and lumber. <laughs> well, because it was just like storage yeah, for right. a lumber company? Right. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, in, in the mid-1800s, um, Akron, Newstead, was actually considered to be the cement capital of the country. There were probably at one time seven or eight thousand barrels of cement a day. Shipped. Wow! So this is an extensive industry here. Oh, it was. It was huge. And so did that. So prior to that, uh, were we talking sleepy little village? And, and and then during that boom, this is when we started getting the population increase, and we yes, started getting yes, the business yeah. increase. Yes. The made, main street that made, that made a huge difference. I mean, it was it was a good village to begin with. It was an active village, but the cement industry made a huge difference. 
So there was a factory town element here, right? Oh, very, I mean, very because, definitely. If very you definitely. Look, yeah, you've got the cement, and then you've got Perry's, mm -hmm. and then what else did you have here? White, whiting door. Whiting door. And you got the gypsum mine. Right. So you're up to like four. I mean, that's a lot of employment. Yes. Oh, you know? yes. Yeah. And, and it was stable employment. I mean, it didn't come and go. Akron would be in sad shape if it was not for Whiting's and Perry's. Right. Because they employ, they still employ a lot of people. Right. In and, the area. And they, you know what? Good for them for staying here. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Because I'm sure at one point they probably had an option to go probably, somewhere else, had, and they yes. chose to stay in their hometown. Yes. The attraction in town that perhaps gets the most regional press is the rich twin octagon house. Built in 1849, the house is one of only three known octagon houses in Erie County, and on February 10th, 1995, it was deservedly added to the National Register of Historic Places. The house features great period piece furniture and decor all through its rooms. It's really something to see and makes a great addition to a fun day trip to the village. Hi, I'm Kate stapleton Parzik. I am the director at the rich twin octagon house in Akron, New York. And the Octagon House is part of an American architectural fad that took place in the mid-19th century. There were four owners of the house, uh, beginning with Charles Rich, who saw Orson Fowler's Octagon House on the Hudson and decided that he needed to build one here in Akron. Orson Fowler's theory was that if you had a round head, if you lived in a round house, you would be in a perfect place. And so he wrote a book, The Octagon House, A Home for All, in which he described in great detail how to create a home that was full of sunlight and fresh air, uh, which was very unusual for mid-Victorian times. So the time that this was built, somewhere between 1850 and 1855, uh, the Octagon House was at the edge of town and up on the hill of Main Street. Um, it was quite the show place. Charles Rich was a merchant. He was a federal Indian agent. He shipped grain to various places and most likely did a lot of entertaining. And so this was the showcase house he built to accommodate all of those things, business uh, and pleasure. As wonderful as the parks are and the Octagon House is, to me, the real beauty here, the real value, simply lies in Akron's Main Street. It's the overall sense of place and community you get when you're here. Akron is a small town that you can actually live in.